to address the issues facing Tennesseans today. From 10 News, this is Inside Tennessee. Good morning and welcome to Inside Tennessee. I'm John Becker and our guest this morning was for a while the state finance commissioner of the state of Tennessee and then voters in Chattanooga elected him mayor of that community. He went on to become senator from the state of Tennessee for a dozen years and we are pleased to have the distinguished former senator from the state of Tennessee, Bob Corker, with us this morning. Thank you for being here, Senator. And our panel this morning, Susan Richardson-Williams, she's a Republican. Don Bosch is a Democrat. He runs his own law firm. She runs her own PR firm. All right, Senator, let's fire away and talk to you first about some issues making headlines, most prominently at the moment, what's happening in the Senate and the impeachment trial or not of former President Donald Trump. If you were in the Senate, would you vote to convict President Trump? Well, let me start by thanking you all for having me on. It's great to be with you. It's great to see you. It's been a long time, and, and uh, I'm glad to be doing this with you. First of all, senators should never say what they're going to do because when an impeachment trial takes place, the Senate, uh, they're the jury. And so for anyone to indicate before the trial even takes place what they're going to do is inappropriate. And just for what it's worth, John, I mean, I, even though I wasn't, I'm not in the Senate today, I, I adhere to that myself. I want to see the testimony, and uh, I don't think any Senate ought to be, any senator ought to be saying what they're going to do on either side of the aisle uh, because it demeans the process. Another policy issue, and we can talk more about that in a minute, but that is making headlines as well, is the conversation about continuing the filibuster in the Senate. Yeah. This is a little bit in the weeds, but it is critically important to how legislation moves through that body, which instead of needing just 51 votes, you need 60 really to move things. Right. That's what really separates it from the House. Senator, yeah. what do you think of the filibuster? Is that something you will be grievously uh, mourning if Democrats do decide to get rid of it? Well, this is the filibuster, uh, you know, for it, it obviously causes the Senate to, to be able to operate in a manner that's bipartisan generally. It's very, it's very rare that there are 60 senators from one side of the aisle, although it did happen at one point in time while I was there uh, when President Obama was uh, president. Um, look, it's been abused unbelievably. It began when I first got there in, in 2007 on the Senate floor. Uh, you know, the, the, the filibuster or the cloture vote was really more to end debate. It was never about voting on the underlying piece of legislation. And what happened over time, as you, all of you know, uh, for the outside groups who wanted, you know, whether you're a Democrat or Republican to fight whatever legislation was on the floor, uh, all of a sudden, the cloture vote, which again was just to end debate, it was never to indicate uh, what your actual vote on the bill was. It was to say, okay, we've debated this enough, so now we're going to have a vote. If you remember Clarence Thomas, uh, obviously a very controversial Supreme Court nominee, passed the Senate by 52 or three votes. Uh, there was no cloture vote, none. So it's been abused. So I have mixed emotions. I'll just be honest. It, there's no reason that legislation. Uh, should take 60 votes to pass if after it's been debated, unless there's something really egregious happening. I would hate to see it. Uh, just my self-interest as a Republican and, you know, caring about policies that are being in place. I would hate to see it ended. I'd hate to see D.C. have two senators because they become a state and Puerto Rico uh, have two senators because they become a state and some of the other pieces of legislation. But for it to work, and I think Lamar said it best when he was leaving, before, for the Senate to work so that every single vote is not a 60-vote threshold, people need to conduct themselves better, okay? It, it's, 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 it messes the process up. We should have very, very few cloture votes, only on the most important things. But it's been abused, uh, and I think uh, my final say would be, look, the Senate's got to start acting like it should, where people have restraint, where they're not using every single element to keep something from happening. When a debate is over, we want to have an up or down vote. The cloture should stay in place so that the most egregious things in our country can't happen, but it's being abused right now. Susan, go ahead. 
Yeah, I've got several things I want to ask you, but I'll start with uh, one foreign policy since you chaired the Senate Foreign Relations Committee. It looks as if um, President Biden and maybe his new Secretary of State, Blinken, are looking at uh, going back with the, re I guess, reinstating the Iran, Iran deal, the JCPOA. Uh, Trump put a lot of sanctions on that country, and apparently they're working yeah. because they're screaming about it. What What are your thoughts about that? I know you were involved with it. Yeah. So, you know, President uh, Trump, if you look at the policies he put in place, uh, almost any Republican uh, president would have nominated conservative judges. As a matter of fact, anyone. Any one of them would have looked at pro-growth tax reform. Um, any, any one of them would have looked at deregulating and making free enterprise flourish. Singer, most important foreign policy initiative he put in place was the Abraham Accords, where we have normalization that's taking place right now between Israel and the Arab community, and it's going to continue to happen. It is incredible what's happening in that part of the world, and he deserves, and Jared Kushner deserved tremendous credit for making that happen. A part of that was upending the Iran deal, which was very flawed. If you remember, even though people misunderstood and maligned us for doing it, we forced President Obama to bring that to the Senate and to Congress. Uh, he was going to go straight to the U.N. Security Council, and it was the legislation we passed that actually made it easier for President Trump to undo the Iran deal. I would be, I think President uh, Biden should do everything he can to build off what the Trump administration did with Israel and what they did in normalizing relations with the Arabs and rushing back into the Iran deal would be the single worst thing they could do relative to that. The flaw with the Iran deal was that it had a sunset provision, which, by the way, the sunset's not that far away now. And all during the time that it's in place, Iran had the ability to develop high-level centrifuges. And as soon as the 10-year sunset provision was over, they're off and running again. So he may want to re-enter negotiations. I, I think that's fine. Uh, he would want to do so with allies, but it, need, it shouldn't be the same arrangement. Uh, and I think Iran is actually showing their true colors right now as they're moving more and more towards highly enriched uranium. So the, the answer is no. Uh, maybe a new type of deal, but not the one that was put in place. We're going to get to more questions from both Susan and Don. We've got to take a quick break. Don, you'll have the floor coming back, and we'll ping pong after that. Stay with us. Senator Corker coming back after the break.